Hey everyone, welcome back to another video. Uh, today we're gonna go over, uh, continue with some animation principles and how to use this for uh, some of the objects uh, in BioBlender. So today we're gonna look uh, mainly at the displacement and wave modifier and how to use them to animate uh, and to give motion to different objects, uh, proteins and membranes uh, that we can import. Uh, so we're gonna start with a planar membrane and as we know uh, there is uh, a default button to animate this uh, with a displacement modifier uh, the way to do this is that uh, once we have our planar membrane we can grab our object and press on the displacement uh, button here this is going to create a slider uh, that we're going to be able to move and that is going to basically uh, animate our uh, uh, motion in our membrane so I can go ahead and select it uh, press G to move and then X to move it on the X axis and as we see uh, we get already uh, some motion uh, in our uh, membrane. Uh, how can we animate this? Then we can grab this slider, uh, press I to insert a keyframe, we can select a location, uh, then as we see here uh, we're gonna have that uh, keyframe inserted here at time 0, then maybe we can go to uh, time 250 or the, your last frame, uh, G to move it, X, and then we're gonna move it 5 in the X direction, and then we're gonna press enter, so we move over here, and now since we are now in 250, uh, oh and I reset that, so let's do it again, group X5 uh, since now we're into 50 we can do insert uh, again a keyframe so now we have these two keyframes here and uh, now what we can do is if we zoom in here we can then press uh, play and as we see we get uh, motion of our lipids, it's a little bit too slow uh, so I can, uh, what I can do to change that is uh, grab this and I can select and drag it over here so maybe let's just do it for 100 frames uh, so that uh, it's playing a little bit faster uh, so we can play around in how we move this lighter uh, to give motion to the membrane uh, I'm also gonna show that this can also uh, this type of motion can also be uh, achieved with a wave modifier so if we go into modifiers and we remove this uh, displacement one because we're not using it anymore and now uh, important thing here is to disable uh, the uh, geometry nodes modifier for now uh, so this is what we see and then we're gonna imp uh, add a wave modifier and we're gonna grab it and move it all the way to the top uh, once we have it in the top we see that we get uh, this wave shape so we will press a uh, uh, spacebar we'll already see this kind of animation that it's a little bit exaggerated uh, so we're gonna uh, basically change these settings uh, for example uh, let's have it be uh, X and Y and let's move uh, maybe these settings so maybe the height to be 0.1 uh, and now we can enable again our uh, lipids here so maybe we can press spacebar and this is what it would look like so it's still uh, maybe if this is a larger uh, membrane this would look okay but for now it's a little bit it has a, a amplitude is too big so maybe we can increase this uh, narrowness uh, to make it more narrow uh, we can also play with the width and we can play with the different settings uh, for example let's try a width of uh, 0 0.1 and maybe a narrowness of uh, 10 we can see if this works uh, so this is giving us like a ripple effect um, we can make this go slower as, as well if we go to the time and maybe we select here uh, 0 0.1 uh, then we can have this oh, that is actually moving faster uh, maybe we try 0 0.01 uh, maybe go with the narrowness a little bit less uh, so we can try this alright so this is looking much better and we can uh, play around this so initially we're gonna see these waves forming but uh, later on uh, we can stop at any frame over here or start our animation for this frame once the waves have already reached here and uh, maybe from the side view it would uh, look uh, it would look like a wave and we would not see the exact pattern uh, we can also try this on a um, vesicle so if we import a vesicle uh, so let's try this again uh, let's disable this just to add it uh, usually it's best to disable it once you're adding modifiers here uh, because uh, it's maybe uh, if you don't then it's gonna apply a wave to every single lipid and you might yeah you might crash blender uh, or it's just gonna take a long time right so for this uh, one let's try for example if we uh, let's just only select X so our wave is only gonna go from the in the X axis uh, cyclic we need and then uh, let's try again 0 0.1 maybe here also 0 0.1 and let's try narrowness of 10 uh, right so let's hit play to see how this is looking okay so this is a, a wave moving through our bi-layer let's move uh, show it this with the lipids 
right so you can also get some uh, effects that look like this maybe we go to a cross section of zero uh, then we can stop at any point of course pressing the spacebar uh, this is what it would look like of course uh, this is a little bit exaggerated but this is just another way to add motion into your scenes uh, we can even make it more exaggerated if we change the height for example uh, it would look something like this a little bit exa exaggerated uh, maybe drop down the narrowness uh, maybe going to a value of like something like two in this case uh, all right so this is now looking much better and you can uh, play around with the settings to see what you like for your scene uh, now I'm gonna move on to uh, importing a protein and seeing that this type of motion can also be added to uh, proteins uh, so I'm gonna go to this uh, ubiquitin protein that I just imported and I'm gonna select it and I'm gonna press this place again uh, and as we see we get the slider in the back so we can move it in the X and we already see uh, the effect is a little bit exaggerated so we're gonna have to play with the settings so to play with the settings uh, we're gonna first uh, going to start here so we're gonna change these uh, displacement settings at uh, the strength we're gonna move it to 0.1 um, and then we're gonna move uh, go into the texture settings and then we're also gonna change this here so we're gonna change uh, let's try a size of something like um, uh, I think one is okay, or maybe let's try something like uh, no. Let, let's keep one for now. Let's play a little bit with the, with the contrast, uh, so we can play here with the contrast as you see in the image, and this is what we would get. So if we go uh, too high, we're gonna break our mesh. So let's do a contrast of zero point two one maybe. Um, all right. Uh, we can also play with the size as I was saying. Uh, if we go too small in the size, then we're gonna get this uh, very large distortion in our mesh if we group this in X, in X uh, this is a little bit too exaggerated so we can again play with this and maybe a size of 0 0.1 uh, 3 and 0 0.03 okay let's try uh, go back to our modifier uh, we can play we can play again with the strength uh, I recommend something like around 0 0.1 uh, so let's see so the over here is looking a little bit deformed so let's try even less so let's try 0 0.01 uh, we can try this and now if we move our uh, slider uh, as we see we get this uh, motion maybe go a little bit or uh, 0.02 so it's all about uh, working with the settings uh, for each specific object uh, so now we can uh, animate this so if we press I location then go to frame something like frame 50 and then just uh, move it in X let's say 5 uh, I to insert a new keyframe uh, then we can uh, press shift and left arrow to go back to frame zero and then we can place uh, uh, press spacebar and that would be the movement we're getting and again we can uh, combine this motion uh, with other sorts of motion uh, so we can even animate our protein so we can press i uh, to set a location and th maybe we can uh, press g to move uh, before pressing g g go to f a, a different frame like frame 50 press g to move it uh, move it over here maybe if that's what you want uh, set that keyframe location with I and then we can see uh, that we get our motion uh, oh so in fact yeah give me one second sometimes uh, the displacement modifier doesn't work uh, let's see we can fix this one yeah let's try deleting the keyframes for a second uh, so to delete the keyframes you can go into item and then right click and then you can do uh, clear keyframes so let's see here our displacement is working uh, we grab it uh, let's set a keyframe again so I uh, let's set uh, uh, yeah let's try uh, location again alright so that's still working uh, now let's go ahead and move it uh, so let's go maybe to frame something like frame uh, 20 uh, move it over here press I and then location again and oh yeah it, it was just that the animation was uh, the animation of this one ended at 50 that's why it wasn't moving but as we see here uh, it is moving up to 50 uh, so that's uh, a way to add it you can even uh, change rotation as well and with I and uh, you can set all different sorts of uh, keyframes uh, last thing I'm gonna show for this one it's gonna be uh, the wave modifier so we can also use the wave modifier uh, if we grab our object and then we go uh, remove the displacement go into wave uh, and then 
uh, we can uh, now we want to distort the actual mesh so if right now it's distorting um, as you see it's giving it a motion uh, in the X and Y axis maybe that's something that we want but in this case uh, what I want is to turn that off so I'm gonna press both in X and Y uh, and then what I'm gonna do is uh, remove the keyframes that we have so let's clear those keyframes uh, now let's go here to our mesh and then what we actually want is to activate along normals and then we're gonna have to again modify the settings uh, so for the height maybe we want something like 0 0.001 so in really small uh, okay so that is uh, working already uh, we can again play with the width and with the narrowness uh, to change the effect uh, so it's gonna be like a uh, heart beating uh, in a way the effect we get out of this uh, but again it's another way to add motion we can always go to the uh, time and uh, increase the speed I want something a little bit faster so this is what this is looking now and again we can press I set a keyframe uh, which uh, I did it while the animation was playing so I'm gonna drag this to one here and then if we go to let's say something like frame 100 and we move it uh, I set location uh, then we get uh, that motion while uh, our object is moving uh, so that's how you can add a motion to proteins as well uh, the last thing I'm going to show you is uh, a final example combining all of this with a, a virus. So I'm going to go ahead and import uh, a, a part of a virus, uh, the, the dengue virus. So this is uh, going to be um, just a subunit of it, or, or just the uh, a, a unit of this virus, and then we're going to do uh, we're going to have to generate the assembly. So if we grab our virus and if we go to BioBlender. Uh, we have to press generate assembly what this is gonna do it's generate uh, basically all the copies needed uh, for us to have our virus uh, so we can go ahead and uh, hide this one or for now uh, I'm, I'm gonna show you guys a new material that I uh, been kind of testing with so we can go to EB uh, let me try this material is still not available it's still uh, on a working version uh, but we can uh, apply the material here and then for this to work right in EB, we need to activate a couple of things. So let me go to EB, ambient occlusion, uh, and I'll show what the difference is. So if I go real close here, uh, if I turn ambient occlusion, uh, you see everything is going to be very shiny. We're not going to get any detail, uh, but ambient occlusion is going to provide darkness in those areas that there is ambient occlusion. And then we're also going to activate uh, screen space reflections. That's just uh, if I deactivate it, you see everything is uh, reflective, but if I uh, activate it, then the reflections work more like uh, they should. Uh, all right, so having those two things activated, I'm gonna go ahead and go to the modifiers. Uh, not, not the modifiers of the sphere, but the modifiers of the protein here that we imported. I'm gonna add a wave modifier. And then to this wave modifier, what I'm gonna do is, uh, let's first do it along the normal. So we're gonna in fact modify the mesh. Uh, again, a height of 0 0.01 uh, uh, works for this. Uh, we can play with the width. Uh, the values I've tested are like 0.55 and then uh, narrowness 1.83. Uh, but it depends on, on uh, if you like uh, what you like. I'm just showing some values that I thought it looks okay. And then a speed I'm also going to modify it to 0.1. All right. Uh, so let's look how this looks. Uh, so as you see, again, it, we get that like... Uh, it looks like a heart but it's just a way to add motion into our scenes so as we see here uh, we can see this in the entire virus and then uh, other thing I'm gonna do just to add more motion to this object is gonna be uh, minimize this and then add another wave modifier and then to this wave modifier we are in fact gonna do X and Y uh, because now we're gonna add motion uh, so it looks like our initial uh, vesicle that we tested so we're gonna add that wave motion uh, so let's keep X and Y selected and then uh, let's try a uh, height of uh, 0.13 otherwise as you see it, it uh, the virus just falls apart because they get too far away uh, with let's try 0 0.41 and then narrowness uh, value of like 1.37 that I tested before and then time again uh, we can change uh, so if we play it right now uh, you see the motion is a little bit too fast uh, so maybe you can change this to something like 0 0.03 so the motion is a little slower and then we get this kind of nice effect of uh, like uh, uh, something being inside a fluid or, or like a, looking like a fluid and if we get close uh, even the mesh is distorting um, yeah so uh, this is just another way of how to add motion into your scenes uh, next we're probably going to be looking at how to uh, uh, add more con 
troll to our motion in a way uh, because this is just a way to add a random motion into our scene uh, to make sure everything's moving uh, since in biology and when we're looking at atoms everything should be wiggling around uh, but if we want more of a control motion then we're gonna do uh, we're gonna see an example of how to rig in next episode uh, it's gonna be a very basic example on how to rig it but if you are uh, are waiting for that video then uh, please give a like and leave a comment or subscribe and until the next one uh, see you